So we pick up episode three with um, DJ Doughboy's character meeting up with L Fame character, which is actually um, the boss, so to speak. So they meet up and they, they basically have a discussion about setting things in motion and having a one-on-one, -on -one, a heart-to-heart, -heart, like, okay, it's time for, for us to get it on, to get our hands on this thing and really start to, to clear everything up before a spot ride right of control. I put the little niggas on, you know what I'm saying? I told them to put the little niggas on, so I put them on it, but they didn't do what the fuck they're supposed to do, man. There's three of them out there, and they only got one. So after, after DJ Doughboy's character meets with L Fame's character, he actually goes to one of his assassins, which is played by Giger. Um, she's actually the top female assassin. And um, that's why we didn't want to show her face in it. You know, it was real clever the way I tried to do that. And um, just to, you know, just to give it that, more, that much more suspense. You know, just like um, New Jack City or um, State Property, same thing, you know. So to speak, just my own little version of that. What do you know? You know something. Come on, dude. Look at you. You crazy. And this scene is actually it's actually kind of um coincidence that the police actually talked to, you know, the shooters, the people that was actually there busting their guns in episode one. The the police are actually finally talking to them. So as the audience, we you don't really know what's gonna happen. They're talking to them and they, you know, Sometimes the cops get lucky and strike a nerve. Sometimes they strike out. But they always act like they got you by the balls when they really don't got nothing. <laughs> you know, so it's all about how um, the actors are actually going to feed into what the police are saying. Are they going to, you know, basically jump ship or are they going to stand tall? We don't, we don't know. I need you to do me a favor. You see these dudes across the street? See the one with the red hat? I definitely need to get at him. Yeah, this last scene was it was actually a dope scene because um the way we used the women in the scene, um we actually got a, a great model in Katie. Um she was real um helpful in this scene along with Giger. And um they basically just on the block. Just on the block, just talking, you know, laughing and joking as as, as we always do, you know, in the modern, you know, any other time in Chester. So Obviously, a beautiful woman's walked by. He tries to talk to her, like, "Oh, hey, come on, what's going on?" Not even knowing that this is a setup the whole time. And um, the way Giger just walked up and just blew his head off, I just thought that was dope. I just thought the audience, you know, didn't expect it. And um, I actually got Paris. He's holding his son, and he actually grabs his son. It was just, it was just magic. The whole. I think we did that. I think we did it like three takes, three or four takes. We did that. And um, that's why I wanted to end it. I wanted to end the episode off just like that. To have people like, oh my God, you know, that was gangster. <laughs> so right now, you know, the reason why um, Snake Eyes and all of them was up there because I actually did a music video for them that day. So why don't you check this out? Here we go. Um, Snake Izza featuring AK, Get It Right Back, directed by yours truly, Iced Out, No Doubt Entertainment. 